Hello, happy Tuesday. I just got home from work. It is 10 to seven and I was editing through my video and taking a second look at it and I was so dissatisfied with it that I figured, you know what, screw it. I'm just gonna reshoot it. Anyways, I'm gonna get moving on with this because I don't want this to take any longer. So today I'm just gonna try and break down just the simple concepts of what are stocks and what are bonds because they're both important aspects of understanding investing. So without further ado, the first thing we're gonna talk about is stocks. All right, so what is a stock? Well, a stock is essentially a piece of a company that you buy. So let's say this company is worth about $100,000 and they want to go onto the stock exchange. So essentially what they would do is take maybe in this case 50% of their company, so let's say $50 million worth of their company, and then break it into $1 million $50 pieces, which you or I could invest in. And by investing, I mean essentially buy. There's a few different things to understand about this stock. So the first thing I would say is depending on the type of company or how young or old the company is, it's gonna pay you differently. If it's a new company that just got onto the market, then essentially the way it would work is that you would own this piece, and let's say that company grows by like 10% this year and so the value of the company increases by 10%. That means that your piece of the pie, or your stock, would also increase by in value by 10%. Alternatively, if it's an older company, maybe something like Walmart, for example, because it's not gonna be growing so massively as it would when it first started out, it's going to pay you dividends, which in Walmart's case, it pays quarterly dividends. So basically, rather than giving you a portion of the growth or of the increase in value of the stock, it just gives you a portion of its revenue. Now, understanding the value of a stock is pretty much impossible. It's essentially just what a bunch of people assume it is and everyone just kind of accepts it and that's the way the free market works. It kind of increases with supply and demand based on people's perception of whatever the stock may be. Alternatively, if we go to the other side, there are bonds. So a bond is something that you could buy from either a government or you could buy from a company as well. And essentially it's the company's way of getting a loan from you. So the way it would work is that they would have a debt to pay and you would loan them by buying a bond. You would be loaning them a certain amount of money at a certain interest rate. So if you're going to buy a Canadian government bond, then I believe their interest rate right now is 2.35%. That will vary as well for the length of your bond. So if you have a 40 year bond, then your interest rate will be a little bit higher because they get your money for longer. But if you just get maybe like a 90 day or a three month bond, then you will likely have a lower interest rate. But it would pay you just the same as like a bank account would, but there is some risk involved. Now bonds are considered usually a, a safer bet because they aren't as volatile as the value of a company. And basically, unless the company goes completely bankrupt, you're gonna be getting your money back. And in fact, investing in a government usually is one of your least risky bets when it comes to investing. So if that's the kind of way you want to invest, great, buy bonds. But if you want to get higher returns, then you have to take on some risk. So this is also kind of interesting to consider that if you can get 2.35% or whatever it is for a Canadian bond, then that should be essentially like a floor benchmark of what you could earn or what you should earn in your investment. Because if you think that is the least risk you can take on and that's the amount that you'll get in return, then any risk you take in addition to that should be paying you more. So it kind of is nice because it gives you that reference point. And typically you'd find that the higher the risk involved with the stocks, so with the new company that doesn't know if they're gonna make or break, then they're gonna have to pay you more because you're taking on more risk. Where with, like I use the example of Walmart, and I'm not saying to buy stocks for Walmart, but with that as an example, because we know Walmart's probably not gonna go bankrupt anytime soon, they can get away with paying somewhat of a lower 
but more stable return on your investment. So that's just a very brief breakdown of the difference between stocks and bonds. The stock being you actually own a piece of the company and it's paying you back for that and the price is very volatile, it can change every second. Where a bond, you would just invest your specific amount, then you would get your interest back over the time of that bond, but you won't actually own a specific piece of the company. So it is a little bit different. In my next video, I'm gonna talk about different products that you can buy or that you can invest in. And I'm gonna talk a bit about diversification and liquidity, because those, those are both pretty important for kind of understanding timing and also mitigating risk. So keep your eye out for that. But for now, I hope this was just a nice, easy, kind of simple understanding to know what a stock is and how that differs from a bond. But with that, I will see you on Thursday. Bye.